let's get started. First things first, the proof is gonna be very nice to have a certain lemma. And that lemma goes like this. Actually, first I'll say, recall theorem, because we're gonna to need to recall a theorem that we proved before. And that theorem is, for all A in the natural numbers, and for all B in the natural numbers, A divides B and B divides A, if and only if A equals B. Proved that one before, very nice. We're, we're, we're throwing everything at this. We're gonna use everything we have. Um, and so now it's gonna be very useful to know this following lemma. The lemma goes like this. Um, for all P in the primes and for all A in the natural numbers, P divides A implies P does not divide a plus one. So this should make a lot of sense. Why should this make sense? I mean, if you just look at a number line, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You take any prime or really any number like three, notice the next number divisible by three is three ahead. The next one, then the next number divisible by three is three ahead, three ahead, three ahead, right? Only every third number is divisible by three. It's kind of what it means to be divisible by three. So if three divides a number like six, it's not gonna divide six plus one. It's not gonna divide six plus two either. You have to get to six plus three until three divides it. Same thing with three divides 12, but three doesn't divide 13. So this makes total sense, right? But how do we prove this? That's always the, the as I say, bad word. That's always the, the crux of this class. How do we prove that, uh, that this actually works that we think it does? So, so an aside, what do you guys think? If this is a homework problem, how would you approach this? Office hours close. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What you try to do with the direct proof, contradiction, contrapositive? I'll give you a hint, you should not use the method of exhaustion. <laughs> Still on the table though, technically. I would probably start with direct proof and if it became too difficult, swap into the contradiction or the contrapositive. Yeah, so we can totally try that, right? So if we, if we start with direct proof, we'll say, okay, assume P divides A. What that means by definition is that there exists a K in Z such that PK equals A. Here's the big problem with direct proofs and why contradiction and contrapositive are so useful how to prove P does not divide A plus one. Like, what would the second to last step be? You know, so if you work backwards, what would you need to show to show P does not divide A plus one? Could we just assume that P does divide A plus one and try that? Well, if we assume, well, so to prove it by direct proof, Right, you as right. hypothesis need to logically show the conclusion works. Yeah, but right. I guess when I get to this point, like it's clear that it's now a contradiction that you can prove that. Exactly, exactly. So it's really hard to show P doesn't divide something because there P divides something that's kind of easier because it's like find the number, right? Like to show P divides A plus one or B or whatever it is, find k such that 
PK equals B, right? Like that's kind of easier. But here we're saying that we have to show it doesn't work for all possible K, which like, how would you even do that? That's very hard. So you're totally right that direct proof is not going to work because how would you get to that? But contradiction, the contradiction to this is that P divides A plus one by opposite of that implies P does not divide A. You see the issue? Now we're assuming this, we're trying to prove this, but once again, how would you ever prove P does not divide A if A is an arbitrary integer? Like how would you show that there's no K you multiply P by to get A? So what else on the table? Guess it's contrapositive. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was contrapositive. Oh, uh, right. contradiction. Sorry. Exactly, it's got to be contradiction, right? If we can even prove it, we know right now. Yeah, and here's the beauty of contradiction. Contradiction assumes the negation, which in this case is there exists a p. in primes such that there exists an A in the natural numbers such that, well, the negation of P divides A implies P does not divide A plus one. Well, the negation of an if then is that A does happen, but B doesn't happen. Because right, the only way an if thing can be false is if you have the A, but the B doesn't happen. So what that means is the negation of this is equivalent to P divides A and not P does not divide A plus one. Plus, what is not P does not divide A plus one other than P divides A plus one? Boom. That's the beauty of negation right there. Not only do we get to assume P divides A, we also get to assume P divides A plus one. And there's no set thing to prove with contradiction. But the contradiction, the only thing you need to do is with this assumption, prove a contradiction happens. So we have to go about and somewhere show this leads to some sort of crazy contradiction. And we'll see obviously why this happens in a second. But think about it. If P divides A, that implies that there exists a K1 such that PK1 equals A. P divides A plus one, that means that there exists a K2 such that PK2 equals A plus one. Well, kind of the whole problem with the number line thing where we're skipping around is that the difference between any multiples of three have to be at least three. Or the differences, differences between any multiples of P have to be at least P. And, and I really do mean differences in the, in the sense that if you subtract any two multiples of three that are different, right, then you're gonna be apart from each other by at least three. So let's subtract these. If we look at A plus one minus A, Right, that equals what's a plus one but pk two, and what's pk and what's a other than pk one? But the difference in a plus one and a is one, but the difference between multiples of p, so it should also be a multiple of p, and we can get that right here. This is p times k two minus k one, and since integers are closed under subtraction, this is an integer. Thus, p divides one. But that breaks the definition of a prime number, right? Exactly. This cannot possibly happen, right? P can't divide one. Why can't P divide one? It's not immediately obvious, but because P is an actual number, notes one divides P. So if P divides one and one divides P, thus we get from our theorem that P, or from our, or yeah, from our theorem here that P equals one. And P can't be one because by definition of prime, P greater than one.
So once you get to here, though, that's that means you guys see why that's a problem. P can't divide one. So saying that a and a plus one are both divisible by p, clearly that means the difference between a and a plus one must be divisible by p. But one's not divisible by p. Contradiction done. Does that make sense? This is a beautiful, nice contradiction proof. I love this. So 